Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Uh, today I want to talk about the brass rod test. Um, how it's done, um, what you need to do it, uh, limitations of the test, and then we'll lead into another test that uh, begins with the brass rod test, but I think is very, or it, uh, it gives you a much clearer picture of what the brass rod test is supposed to give you. Now the brass rod test, the first time I read about the brass rod test was uh, in one of Wayne Goddard's books. Basically you take a quarter inch brass rod and you cut a groove inside a block of wood and then you epoxy that brass rod into the block of wood so it doesn't move. And then you can take this block and you can either uh, chuck it up in the vise to hold it. Um, I like using a bathroom scale an awful lot because it gives me another... Um, measurement uh, when I get to the edge deformation test which we'll talk about later um, but basically when you do the test now I'm gonna do it right here right quick and then I'm gonna uh, get you up close to the camera so hopefully you can see I've spent all morning trying to figure out how to get um, the camera set up and the lighting so that you can really see what's happening with the edge and I can't do it I uh, uh, either I need a better camera, I need to learn how to use the camera I've got, or maybe I'm not holding my mouth right. But anyways, so you take your the knife that you want to test, and you lay it flat on the brass rod, and then you raise it up to about the sharpening angle, or a little bit more, and what you do is you press down on that knife, and you get to see the edge uh, come up over the brass rod, and then when you're done with the test, you ought to be able to look down at the edge and see that the edge sprang or flexed over the brass rod and then returned to true. Now, folks say that that tells you whether your heat treat is perfect or not. Um, the problem with that is you can take a knife at almost full hardness and depends on how you do the test, you can make that test pass or fail. You can also do that test with that knife at almost full softness and it'll still pass the test depending upon uh, how you do the test. Basically here's, you'll see a little point of light on the side of the blade is the best that I can get on camera. Um, let's get the angle right. Right, oh, right there. See that point of light that changes? That's the steel flexing up over the brass rod. And of course you can see the edge, it's, well you can't see the edge, but it's, it's straight so it passed. Um, the traditional uh, pass or fail with this test is that if you can draw that edge over the brass rod and it spring, or goes back to true, that you're good. If you see or hear any chipping in that edge, then the blade is too hard and it needs to be softened. If you run the edge across the brass rod and the edge bends over and stays bent, then the edge or the blade is too soft and it needs to be quite a bit harder. So what I did, since I couldn't figure out a way to show you on the blade what was happening, I've got these two props. We've got here a piece of uh, just a wood shim, you know, for like installing a door or a window and a piece of aluminum shim stock. <clears throat> so basically this brass rod test as it's as it's presented here it does test your heat treat after a fashion but mostly what it tests is uh, the thinness of the edge that's being tested. You take this this wood uh, piece of shim and use it as an example and this is what is happening to that edge as it goes over the brass rod. Now this shim being thinner at the uh, top and thicker at the bottom makes a good example. So just imagine this, the point facing away from us and the handle facing towards us. This is what's happening to that edge as it goes over the brass rod. Okay, so in the traditional sense, this wooden shim would pass the brass rod test. This uh, aluminum shim, just a little piece of aluminum shim stock, I think it's so oh, about seven thousandths thick or so. Now it's got a little bit of a, a curve to it. Okay, but still, 
you grab it and you push on it and it springs right back. So this would pass the brass rod test. Okay, now, so the brass rod test is more of a test of the thinness of the material that you're testing. And a little bit of the heat treat also. I mean, if your heat treat is way, way off, then yeah, it'll chip or, or the edge will chip or uh, it'll stay bent over. Um, so that leads me to what I like to call the edge deformation test. Basically, you take the same blade and you do the test in the same manner, but you do it on a bathroom scale so that you can see how much force it is that you're pushing down on the, the brass rod and then you force that edge to uh, deformation and then you note how the edge deformed now if you were to take a knife that was extremely hard and with a very light pass it would pass the brass rod test at some point as you keep increasing the pressure and keep increasing the angle, that edge will fail. It's, uh, I've heard it called the elastic limit. Uh, every material has got one. Once you reach that elastic limit for that blade at that heat treat, now you know with what it, how it failed, how to adjust your heat treat so that it won't fail like that or will fail a little bit less like that again. So in the case of our aluminum shim stock, <clears throat> with very light pressure it'll flex and come back to true flex and come back to true now increase that pressure and it still comes back increase the pressure still comes back increase the pressure and at some point it will take a set and it will uh, remain bent over the same thing with the wood so on if this was a knife blade you could take that information and then decide, okay, well, is that the way I wanted that edge to fail on that particular knife with that style of grind? If that's how you want the edge to fail, well, then you're good. If you would rather the edge didn't bend over so easily, you're trying to get a little bit more strength out of it, then you can either thicken your grind up a little bit or uh, heat treat it to where it was a little bit harder. Now, on the other side is this wooden shim. We press and it flexes back to true. Press a little bit harder, you heard that crack and it comes back to true. Press a little bit harder and the wood starts splitting and it breaks. The same thing will happen to an edge that's too hard, only instead of breaking like this wood did, it will chip out. That's what I like to call the edge deformation test. And like I said, I like to do the edge deformation test on a brass rod which you know it's traditionally called the brass rod test but you can use a nail or uh, basically anything that's roughly a quarter inch in diameter um, and smooth if you try to use like a uh, like a sharpening steel the ridges in the steel will create uh, it'll make the edge chip out sooner than what it normally would so I've got a blade here one of the new uh, 1095 or, uh, 440C testers and I'm going to do a edge deformation test on this one. Now this one isn't, uh, uh, I'm going to save the other one for the video on that one, but this was one of the testers that came out pretty close that led me to um, my current heat treat on 440C. So we'll move you over here so that you can see the, the scale and hopefully see the knife at the same time. Okay, you can see the scale and see the brass rod, and if I stay right about in that area, you'll be able to see the knife. Okay, so if I do the regular brass rod test, okay, it takes 10 pounds, or at least that's what I was pushing on it. It flexed over the brass rod and sprang back to true, so it's pretty close. Now what we're going to do is just pick a spot on the blade come up to our sharpening angle which mm, I'm guessing 15 degrees or so 
and we're going to bear down. And I can see that edge flexing. We're at 30 pounds. Let back up. Nothing. It went back to true. So we have to go harder. Because we need that edge to fail so that we can uh, um, adjust the heat treat farther. Because right now we're just in the ballpark. So now we'll raise it up to 25 degree angle. Bear down. That edge is flexing. We've hit 30 pounds. Let it back up. Edge is still true. we got to go farther. This time we'll go this way. Okay, so we'll raise it up to... That's at about a 40 degree angle. Forty five pounds. It kind of looked like maybe I had a, a set there for a second. Yet there's a very, very slight roll on that edge. You probably won't be able to see it in the camera, but let's let's take the test even farther. Um, you know, so we can get something more dramatic, so hopefully you can see it. So now let's go, what's that? Let's see, that's 90. That's about 45. And I'm kind of on an angle here at the camera, so I'll push down and then into it. 40, 45, 50. Okay, there, it did take a definite set, whether it's enough that you're going to be able to see it. You'll see the light reflecting right there, right in front of my ring. There's a very, very, right there, you can see the light glinting a little bit different off the edge. What that is, is it's a set that's about one to two thousandths to the right out of line with the rest of the edge. Now that tells me that that edge, or that, that part of the test, the edge deformation test, that tells me that the heat treat for that blade is spot on. You could take another knife and do that same type of edge destruction or edge deformation test and if it's grossly too hard it would have chipped out you know under 10 pounds or if it was grossly too soft it would have bent over under 10 pounds but to get that kind of pressure and that kind of angle to get that slight of damage that tells me that the heat treat is pretty much as close to perfect as I can get it at least at this time. I've only been working with 440C now for a couple of weeks so um, there's still quite a bit of work to do but that lets me know that I'm in the ballpark and that is the difference between a brass, a traditional brass rod test and an edge deformation test. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.